Hi everyone, welcome back to the episode of Ask Dr. Nick. My name is Dr. Nick Schmilkoffer and I work for the Neurologic Wellness Institute. And on today's episode, we're gonna answer the question, who can benefit from vagus nerve stimulation? And this is kind of a loaded question because there are a lot of people that can benefit from vagus nerve stimulation. The vagus nerve is the 10th cranial nerve, meaning it comes directly from the brain stem in the brain. And it goes down and it tracks down through your neck into the chest cavity to innervate the heart and the lungs and then into the abdomen to innervate or um, uh, get basically sense sensory information and send motor output to the liver, the uh, a lot of the gastrointestinal tract, all the way down to close to the pelvis. Um, uh, but the vagus nerve also helps with um, tasting on the back of the tongue or towards like the epiglottis or pharynx. It also helps um, or get, brings in sensation from the ear, which is why we can stimulate it on the ear, um, also stimulate it in the neck. And then it is also involved in speech. So it innervates muscles that are around our vocal cords. So it helps with speech. And so the vagus nerve does a lot of things. Um, it is also termed the wandering nerve or the wanderer, um, as that is what vagus means in Latin, uh, because it just does wander down into a lot of areas of our um, trunk and abdomen. <clears throat> so um, with the vagus nerve stimulation, a lot of people can benefit because it is gonna put you more in the rest and digest or parasympathetic nervous system. The autonomic nervous system is broken up into fight or flight, sympathetic, and rest and digest, or parasympathetic. And the vagus nerve activates more of the parasympathetic. And that can help decrease inflammation, whether it's chronic inflammation, acute inflammation. It can help put people in a more calm state, so it's good for people with anxiety and depression. Um, there are many uses for vagus nerve stimulation. But we're gonna get into a paper that, um, as we just get into it here, it's from the Journal of Inflammation Research, and it talks about a review of vagus nerve stimulation as a therapeutic intervention. Uh, it is from 2018. This article talks mostly about invasive vagus nerve stimulation. So basically, people will um, get a vagus nerve stimulator or an electrical transducer that's wrapped around their vagus nerve. Typically, it's the left vagus nerve versus the right. Um, but it gets wrapped around and then it sends impulses every 30 to 90 seconds. Um, I think you can be also triggered um, manually as well. Um, but this, I think, is a good paper to look at to just see um, all the potential benefits, even though in our clinic and in a lot of other places um, and even at home, you can stimulate your vagus nerve um, electrically that is non-invasive. So either on the ear or on the neck directly um, with, again, an electrical device, stimulating device. So if we look at the paper, um, the abstract just kind of talks about how the FDA has approved clinical uses for vagus nerve stimulation. The vagus nerve uh, stimulation is currently FDA approved for therapeutic use in patients over 12 years old with drug-resistant epilepsy and depression. So basically, people with epilepsy, so a lot of seizures, chronic seizures, um, can get vagus nerve stimulation um, invasively to help prevent them. Um, depression as well, which is pretty cool. Both of these show that epilepsy and depression may um, react well to decreasing chronic neuroinflammation uh, because again, the vagus nerve stimulation helps to decrease inflammation. Um, again, these anti-inflammatory properties, the vagus nerve uh, has shown promising results also for treating chronic inflammatory disorders such as sepsis, lung injury, rheumatoid arthritis, and diabetes, uh, and also may be able to control pain and fibromyalgia and migraines. Um, so if we look more into the paper, here there is a beautiful picture of, this is a cross section, so basically it's just taken like this right through the brainstem. Um, and so this is in the medulla or the medulla oblongata, the very lowest part of the brainstem. And it just shows that the vagus nerve brings in afferents, brings sensory information from the lungs, um, the heart, the liver, the intestines, okay? And that is gonna go to the 
to the brainstem to this nucleus tractus solitarius, and then there are areas that send it out. There's a couple that nucleus ambiguous, the um, dorsal motor vagus nucleus sends motor output to the heart, the spleen, the intestines for, again, motor. So the vagus nerve is actually 80% sensory, 20% motor. So 80% of it is actually telling the brain what is going on in the gut, whether there's uh, an infection, whether there's inflammation, um, there is food sensitivities that cause inflammation, what is going on with that environment down there. Um, here it just says that a fine wire electrode generally is attached to the left vagus nerve. The reason why the right is not as well is because it does stimulate the sinoatrial node in the heart, so it can possibly cause um, arrhythmias. And so that's why we'd rather do it on the left, but there has been um, other studies showing that doing it electrical stimulation that's non-invasively can be fine on the right uh, and safe on the right. So again, here are these clinical uses um, that are FDA approved, epilepsy. It's amazing what um, it can do for epilepsy. Um, so the device can be turned on every 30 to 90 seconds for a brief period. Okay, the typical treatment for epilepsy and depression uses a range of 20 to 30 hertz, 50 microseconds, okay. Um, and approximately 40% of patients using VNS show 50% reduction in seizures after two to three years of treatment. So um, that's a pretty good for people that have no other options with epilepsy. We also know that ketogenic diet can be beneficial, but people have other, no other options, this may be beneficial. Um, here are just what's happening in the brain. Um, so they're looking at the vagus nerve stimulation is activating these brain stem going up to the cortex, which is going to improve a lot of um, external signaling or basically motor signaling back down to control inflammation. Here again, we have depression. So treatment of depression, uh, vagus nerve stimulation can increase mood. And therefore, it was looking at possibly vagus nerve stimulation for depression, which again is FDA approved for. Um, and then there are all these potential uses and mechanisms um, for, in, for vagus nerve stimulation and decreasing inflammation in other diseases. So for instance, like cardiovascular disease, arthritis, Alzheimer's disease, all could benefit from decreasing inflammation. Um, again, sepsis, which is an infection in the blood, can be very beneficial if we can have some vagus nerve stimulation. Pain management, uh, pain, sometimes pain management is due to neuroinflammation. Sometimes it's due to um, serotonergic, so these neurotransmitter deficiencies, serotonergic and neuroadrenergic, these neural circuits just aren't working as well. Therefore, pain sensation is um, centralized or it has a central sensitization, which basically means um, a small amount of pain can lead to a lot amount of pain, or there might be no nociception, no pain trigger in the body, but then the brain is perceiving pain. Um, therefore, treatment of migraines, which we talked about, obesity, because obesity comes with metabolic syndrome, generally there's inflammation there, cardiovascular disease, inflammation there, um, lung injury was another one, diabetes, and of course, more of my favorite is stroke and TBI, because that is what we deal with a lot here in our clinic. Um, and so we use vagus nerve stimulation a lot with patients who are post-stroke or post-traumatic brain injury because we can alleviate or we can decrease the neuroinflammation, whether that is acute neuroinflammation or chronic neuroinflammation. So um, this is just a, a quick uh, summary, a quick paper of who can benefit from vagus nerve stimulation. Like I said, a lot of people can benefit, especially when uh, we can do it non-invasively. Um, even though this study looks mostly at invasive ways to stimulate the vagus nerve to help people with different conditions. Uh, we can do it non-invasively and still get many benefits. It is generally a fairly cheap, um, um, a fairly cheap modality, especially if you're using electrical stim. If you want to do things at home, you can do things like meditation, gargling, um, chanting, singing, anything that's stimulating your throat. Um, you can do deep breathing exercises, whether that be resisted breathing or just uh, breathing where you exhale out longer than you inhale. 
Uh, there are many, many ways that you can stimulate the vagus nerve. You can probably find them on YouTube in uh, multiple areas, but vagus nerve stimulation can benefit so many people, so I really suggest you looking into it. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. If you have any suggestions for future topics, I would love to hear them. Thanks again, and have a great day. Stay healthy.